Hi everyone, welcome back to Vedic Life Coaching. Thank you so much for joining me and welcome to the Rahu Ketu Shift March 2022 video. This shift is huge. This is really big. We're closing out a cycle. We're closing out a cycle of about a year and a half. We've had a year and a half of this energy and we're about to open a brand new cycle in March. 2022. So what have we had? What do we currently have? Well, as of the time of publishing this video, we currently have Rahu in Taurus and we have Ketu in Scorpio and we're going to have Rahu move into Aries and Ketu move into Libra. Now, if we look at the planets that are associated with these signs, you're going to see that we're basically going to be experiencing almost a mini polar shift because we're going to see Rahu go from a Venus sign, Rahu is going to step into a Mars sign and we're going to see Ketu step out of a Mars sign and into a Venus sign. Okay, so this is almost like a polar shift of energy. So perhaps over the last year and a half, if you have felt maybe a bit lazy or maybe like you haven't achieved much or you haven't done much. Well, now that could be due to Saturn and Pluto in Capricorn. I'm kind of expecting things to be possibly a bit sluggish and out of order, you know, even up until 2025. So please don't feel worried if you're, you know, things aren't normal, you haven't done as much, you know, you're feeling things are slow, what's going on. This could be due to those two planets that are causing significant change and upheaval and transformation. But equally, if you look at the past year and a half, you might notice, you might feel like, yeah, I, I was kind of a bit relaxed or I didn't do as much, or perhaps in this next year and a half, you might feel a real shift in energy. So observe that, see in your own life how this is playing out. Does Rahu in Mars energize you? it can be a very energizing thing. I've seen people who have this Rahu Mars combination in their birth chart. These people, they tend to have a lot of energy, a lot of get up and go. They want to do things. They want to get things done. There's an excitement about this energy. So in this video, I'm going to explore how this is going to work for us personally, as well as how this is going to work in the collective. And then of course, as always, I'm going to do a little mini breakdown for every single sign. So you will be able to see how this is going to manifest for you. So let's take a look at my notes here. Rahu transiting over natal Rahu. Okay. If you have got Rahu transiting over your natal Rahu. So if your natal Rahu is in Aries, then that is huge for you, okay? Because you are going to be closing out an 18 year cycle. You're going to be having a nodal return, okay? So, this is something where if you're old enough, you can look back and see, you know, what was happening 18 years ago, what's happening now, you know, am I closing out a big cycle? This is the kind of cycle where, you know, sometimes people get married at the beginning and sometimes, yeah, they are, they are you know, transitioning out of a marriage at the end. I've seen that happen. There's all kinds of things. People leave their careers or they switch a career or they move or something very significant can come to an end at this time. So if you are going through a nodal return of 18 years, one of the other things to look out for is the fact that you might not actually know while you're in it, what is closing out. Okay, and I'll give you an example. Me, I had a nodal return, believe it or not, in, uh, when was that? I think it was 2016 actually. And I mentioned this because on my website, on the about page, I do talk about the fact that in 2016, that was the year when I was studying Vedic astrology so much, like all the time, basically. I did nothing but study the subject. And at that time, when I was, you know, in that year, I was observing the nodes and all the things that were going on. And I kept saying that, well, I don't feel anything. I'm not seeing anything, you know, and I didn't know that actually that was the year where everything changed. So you might be going through this year and it might feel like 
it's business as usual, you know, nothing much is changing, nothing much is happening for me. But this could be the year that you look back in several years and go, wow, my whole life changed in 2022. For some of you, this change is that big. Okay, so look out for that. Some of you will be experiencing a half nodal return. So that's if your Rahu is transiting over natal Ketu. Okay, so look out for that in your chart and you'll be able to see what kind of a transition this is for you. Now, what are the dates of this incredibly big shift? Okay, I've got here 18th March 2022 to 28 November 2023. So these are the dates that I have. My astrologer's date and time and everything is set to Sydney, Australia. So if it's a day or so out, you'll know why. But these are the dates that I have here where Rahu will shift from Taurus into Aries and Ketu is going to shift from Scorpio into Libra as per the sidereal Vedic coordinates. Now, who is with Rahu? Do we have anyone here with Rahu? We do indeed. He's not alone this time. Uh, we have Uranus in the house and that's actually really exciting. Okay, and that's why I think I'm going to call this episode something like reinvent yourself. This is a really great time for you to reinvent your whole entire being potentially you know and especially there will be some of you depending on where this is happening in your chart it will be a particularly good time to really just transform everything about yourself if that's what you want to do you know if you feel like this is a good time to completely reinvent who you are you want to try something new or you want to break out you want to maybe change career you know this could be a really good time for that so we've got Uranus in Aries in the same house as Rahu. Another thing about Uranus being here is that this can cause a lot of changeability. Energies might shift and fluctuate quite a bit. And we could see this playing out well in all kinds of ways. But for us personally, it could play out in terms of shifts of energy, you know, sometimes we're tired, sometimes we're full of energy. Yesterday, I was supposed to do this video yesterday and I was just exhausted. I had a headache, I just couldn't, you know, and I was doing some work on the weekend as well, so that's probably why. But um, yeah, I've been noticing my energy has been fluctuating, okay? So it could be to do with this big transition that's about to happen. We also have Pluto basically in square or in hard kendra aspects to the nodes okay now Pluto is all about transformation and Pluto is currently doing a massive job of transforming the world stage okay it's in Capricorn 10th house world stage right so also leaders the very top leaders you know people who are running the show are all being seen to by Pluto okay and he's there for quite a while I'm pretty sure he's there till something like 2039 let me just double check that actually I think it's something like 2039 that he's in Capricorn yeah so he's he's got a big job to do and it's going to take him time to sort all of that out I mean if, if he's trying to bring a house of cards down so that a, a better house can be built you know he's going to take some time to do that so that is quite interesting there now what's the significance of Rahu in Aries and Ketu in Libra okay so let's just take a look at this in general terms so Aries is fire energy that's leadership that's being seen as well so your own personal sense of leadership might be more strongly in focus. This is a great time to shine, to be seen. Uh, if you want to lead, if you want to make progress, if you want to get things done, then this is really great energy for all that type of activity. And we've got Ketu in Libra. So perhaps, you know, you might not be feeling as social. Perhaps relationships aren't going to be as much of a focus for you. This is, you know, Rahu in, in a Mars sign, especially Aries. This is great to, to be an individual, to get stuff done, for this to be all about you, okay? This is really good energy for that. 
Um, you may not feel as social. You may not be as inclined to travel as well. Perhaps travel may not be as exciting with these energies. That's a possibility. Now, how is this going to play out in the collective? Well, with Rahu in Aries with Uranus, uh, one of the things that I've been thinking about, I've been contemplating this energy the whole weekend, and one of the things I feel is that people are going to want to potentially argue a bit, um, debate things. People are going to feel really inclined to speak their mind. Okay, um, I've got the note here, attack energy will be strong. And this is quite interesting. I do see that when Rahu and Mars are conjunct in a birth chart, the person is quite fearless in, in going in to attack someone. In fact, they, quite, they almost enjoy that. And I don't have this energy at all. I'm not that kind of person who likes to attack or do any of that. But uh, I'll give you an example of someone, Josh Hawley. He's a senator in America, and I'll include the link below so that you'll be able to see him in action. There's a great video of him basically, um, you know, putting Mark Zuckerberg in a corner. Okay, and Mark Zuckerberg, as we know, billionaire, very successful, very famous, very powerful man. And yet here is this senator who is just fearlessly kind of verbally, verbally, Putting, putting him in a corner and, and pursuing him and attacking him, really. But it, it's very interesting to watch. So I'll, I'll leave that for you to take a look at. But I think there's going to be more of this kind of activity of people actively going after what they believe is right, defending their freedoms, speaking up for truth, uh, all this kind of energy is going to crescendo and, and going to become quite important over the next year and a half. So the other thing I see is that this energy will massively ease off November 2023 onwards. So once we're done with this Rahu in Mars, then we have Rahu in Pisces, I believe, and that's Jupiter. So that's going to be quite different. And we're going to see the energy massively ease off definitely so it's here for a time this strong energy and and the timing of it is really quite incredible because it lines up with the fact that saturn is going to go into aquarius in 2023 so just imagine saturn is going into aquarius in 2023 the focus and the spotlight will be on humanity that will be 2023 2024 these are going to be key years in humanity rising up and fighting for freedom and you know going for for what humanity believes is right and it's incredible to have this rahu in aries energy almost preparing an army of light warriors okay because rahu ketu they both represent the army you know and i think that this is kind of nature's energy is going to rise up in each one of us and some of us are going to feel it quite strongly. Some of us are going to feel it like, I can't just sit here and let my nation fall to pieces or whatever it is, right? A lot of people are going to feel this quite strongly. And we are seeing it happen now, even just with Saturn being in Capricorn there. This energy is, is, is coming up uh, because Saturn's getting ready to go into Aquarius. The other thing I read about Saturn in Aquarius is that he, Saturn is very at home there. It's a very kind of pure place where Saturn really loves to be. Saturn loves to, you know, um, do the real work and is, is a humanitarian at heart, you know, that's beautiful energies there in Aquarius. So amazing times are coming our way. Now, what about Ketu in Libra? What about some predictions here, how, how that's going to go play out for the collective. Well, one of the things I've written is that diplomacy uh, may not be such a thing. You know, isn't that an interesting thing to say? What do I mean there? 
Will people want to be diplomatic? No, I, I th because I think Rahu is going to be an Aries. People are going to be speaking their minds. I think people aren't going to care so much about being diplomatic. People are really going to say what they think. I have the note here that foreign travel may not be so big. Another thing I had said, this was I think the last time I touched on the nodes, the last time I did a video on the nodes, or in, maybe in a different video, but I had said something about we might see more truth come to light. We might see, because Ketu was suppressing the truth, Ketu in Scorpio, I think was hiding a lot of information, suppressing a lot of secrets. Okay, so Ketu, a strong suppression energy, was suppressing Scorpio, was suppressing the secrets. A lot of secrets in Scorpio, a lot of secrets in Pisces. Okay, imagine after this transit, so after November 2023, Rahu's going to go into Pisces, that could be a, a big time as well where secrets come to light, where truth comes out. But I think even now, from now onwards for a year and a half, we could definitely see some more truths come out. I think the process will probably be gradual. I don't see big massive truths coming out all at once. Uh, I, I think it's going to take time for you know, some, some of the really big things to happen that we, we would all love to see happen. But yeah, I have the note here with Ketu in Libra, we won't be needing each other so much out of our fears and out of our insecurity. You know, we're going to have more confidence to stand out, to have a unique opinion, to be different to other people. So I think that's going to be good. I've got here, nation states might be more willing to stand alone. The energies of defending territories and drawing firm boundaries will be high at this time. I also have the note here, all eyes will be on America 2023 to 2024. And I've written here, if anything or anyone is trying to dismantle America, I really don't see that happening with Rahu and Aries. Yeah, I, I don't think so. I, I think... Uh, that America is, you know, I think the people of America, they're always making that country great. And they're going to continue to do that. You know, and we're going to see, we're going to see this Saturn moving into Aquarius. The people are going to be in focus. That's where, and, and sure, we'll see challenges. We will see problems. It's not going to be a smooth ride, but I've got a lot of belief. In humanity and the people and you know that that we're going to make wins as as we go along I think we're just about ready to start taking a look at how these energies are going to play out for each sign so if you're ready and you want to stick with me throughout this or if you're indeed an Aries how are we doing we're at the 18 minute mark I think I might even do you know what I think I might switch over the memory card and begin fresh. Aries, welcome Aries. Now for you, you have got Rahu in your first house and you have Ketu in your seventh house. Nice and easy. So this is an incredible time of personal leadership and transformation. In this year and a half, no one else's opinion matters. Okay, this is a time to tune in to who you are, to what you're all about, to what you dream of, and to really go after it, to really make it happen, okay? Because I do think physically you're going to have the energy. Now, see how you go with this, because when Mars transits the first house, this kind of does depend on what you've got going on. Yeah, so take this with a pinch of salt. I would have to look at your chart properly, but a general principle is that yeah, I think Rahu and Mars, I have seen this in, in personal charts. People have energy, you know, they, they really go after what they want. They, they're building their empire. They're making it happen. They have the physical energy to do it. So you might also take this opportunity of this next year and a half to become a little bit more body focused. Uh, you might be a bit more interested in the gym. 
you might be a bit more interested in looking after your health. Sometimes Mars in the first house by transit, sometimes that can be challenging on the body. Sometimes it can cause inflammation. Sometimes it can make us a bit run down or tired. Okay, so that, that's a possibility there as well. But, but that's, that's what I'm seeing here, just as a general thing of Rahu and Aries. One of the things you might notice is that relationships may not be so much in focus. Um, if you're on social media, this is kind of an interesting transit actually, because on the one hand, you've got Rahu in Aries, which is fire, which is lighting you up, which is making you very visible. But then you've got a suppression energy going through one of your air houses and you are going to need air in order to light you up even more, make you even more famous kind of thing. So it, it's an interesting one. Uh, I, I ran this uh, one time myself, I think from my moon or something, and I was looking and my social media wasn't really growing <laughs> that much. It didn't really work out for me. And I think it could have been Ketu going through the seventh from. So um, that's a possibility. But Yeah, I've got the note here, a suppression energy may inhibit the growth of your following. It's a possibility, but keep going and keep building your profile and keep building your business or your career or your social media platform, whatever it is, because Saturn remembers. Saturn remembers all your hard work and he will reward you later. Okay, so always keep putting the work in. Even if you're not getting the results or it's, it's not really happening or you think, you know, does anyone notice or Saturn notices and he remembers and he rewards. Okay, so don't you worry about that. You will be seen and you'll be rewarded. But this is looking quite good for you, Aries. And I think this is a great time, especially in, in the realm of personal leadership and you being a self and that what you think matters uh, over this next year and a half. Absolutely. And, and work to make that a reality work to make that happen i'm excited for you aries thank you so much for tuning in and we are now going to welcome taurus taurus welcome so you have got rahu in your 12th house and you've got ketu in your sixth house okay oh brilliant you've got ketu in the sixth this is really great so ketu in the sixth is perhaps one of the very best uh, placements of all time even it's the suppression of enemies and I have seen this in certain, you know, very high flying type charts. People who are very successful. They have this. They have K2 and the six is suppressing the enemies and the competition. So I've got the note here, that, you know, there shouldn't be too many critics that are holding you back. Hopefully you're going to be free of competitors as well. Um, if you do have people trying to poke at you, trying to copy you, trying to intimidate you, well, Either this will die down or you're just not going to notice it. You're not going to care because you're going to be very engaged in what it is that you're doing. Now, Rahu in the 12th, this is a great time for you to use your imagination in a really powerful way. So you can even use this Rahu energy to perhaps heal something about your sense of self, uh, to reinvent or to reimagine yourself as well. So this is really nice energy here. A great time to pursue new healing techniques like hypnosis. Maybe there's some kind of hypnosis or something that you haven't tried before or something that you would like to try as a way and a means of kind of getting behind the veil, getting deeper into your own subconscious to learn more about your own dynamics, your own patterns, how you tick, how you work. This could be a great time as well to explore your subconscious through psychology, through coaching, through personal development tools and books and all that kind of thing. Uh, there is even the possibility of foreign travel, even just for a little holiday, getaway, that kind of thing. But what I would say is be very careful if you're thinking of traveling because you know, we've got Saturn and Pluto in Capricorn making big transformations to things like the airline industry, to insurance, to hotels, all that kind of thing. So please be very, very careful. Um, and the other thing is with Rahu in the 12th, don't go overboard on spending. 
that's another possibility as well. So Taurus, I'm loving the Ketu in the sixth energy for you. That is fantastic energy, which I'm really hoping will, you know, help you grow your career, help you grow your service in the world, whatever that may be. So thank you so much for stopping by Taurus. And we are now going to welcome Gemini. Gemini, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. Now you have got Rahu in the 11th house. You've got Ketu in the 5th house. Okay. Oh, this is brilliant. Rahu in the 11th. Lucky you. You're one of the lucky ones. So this is an excellent time for you to go after new opportunities, go for new jobs, go for promotions. Great time to expand your business. You might be able to build your client base. Um, it's great for social media. Okay. So if you want to expand your social media profiles, maybe you run a YouTube channel, you have Instagram, whatever it is, it's a great time for that. I'm just thinking of a very famous English vlogger. She has something like 11 million subscribers and she certainly got there by having Rahu in the 11th house of her birth chart. So this is a really good spot where you have Rahu at the moment. Uh, well, March onwards. Now it's a great time to pursue any opportunities relating to wealth, you know, you can build up new sources of income as well at this time. So that's for a year and a half. You could be thinking about, yeah, how do I uh, create new sources of income, new income streams? Now, Ketu in the fifth is not the best transit for romance, uh, you know, but it is. I'm going to say that I think this is a good time for you to be tapping creative gifts that perhaps you haven't been using. K2 energy in the fifth, you can be tapping creative gifts, things that perhaps maybe you've honed in past lives or something like that. Again, I'd want to look at your chart to really say for sure. But as a general thing, you know, uh, creative gifts maybe that you haven't been using, great time to be tapping the wisdom of ancient sources as well. Um, K2 in the fifth, you may even have some energy here for for things that are self-made you know you and that's helping your rahu there you know that self-made energy of well i'm going to make it happen you know it, it might not be falling in my lap or landing in my lap but i'm going to go out there and i'm going to make it happen this ketu energy might help with your rahu there i've got the note be careful of wanting to be perfect with your creativity okay that's a ketu transiting the fifth type of thing uh, you can use the 80-20 Pareto principle and, you know, get your stuff out there. Don't think it has to be perfect. Yes, the 80-20 principle. I use that all the time. I don't aim for 100%, you know, in all of my videos and probably even this one right now. You know, <laughs> there are mistakes. <laughs> like there's always something that when I'm editing, I'm like, oh, I could have done that so much better. I have that all the time. So yeah, this, this is one of those things. So don't feel like you have to be perfect with your creativity, okay? Uh, focus more on the Rahu side of things and focus more on the fact that, hey, I can get stuff out there and I can get stuff happening. They say, well begun is half done. So begin, make sure you start, okay? Get started with your creativity. And, and start getting stuff out there. The other thing I've got to note here as well is if you have children, don't expect them to be perfect at this time, okay? So that's another thing there. But Gemini, this is really looking great. I'm very excited for the fact that you have Rahu transiting the 11th house for a year and a half. That's epic, great energy, especially for making money and expanding. All right, thanks for joining. We are now gonna welcome Cancer. Cancer, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. Now you've got Rahu in the 10th house. You've got Ketu in the 4th house. Okay, so Rahu in the 10th house, you can definitely expect the focus to be on your career. You can definitely expect growth and expansion in your career as well. This is a great time to impress the boss with your original ideas. Okay, Rahu in the 10th, think out of the box. Do something that your peers aren't doing. You know, be original be unique in whatever it is that you're presenting or putting out there for the world to see. I've got the note here, if you want to go for a promotion, there is also very good energy to do this. 
And there's also the possibility of career related travels as well. Okay, so traveling in connection with career over the next year and a half is a good thing. Okay, um, be careful, of course. We do have Saturn and Pluto in Capricorn. You know, there's transformation to the airline industry, to insurance, to hotels, all that kind of thing. So be careful. But there is a possibility there. Now, Ketu in the fourth, uh, you might not be enjoying being stuck at home so much. You know, it might really occur to you March, April, May, in the early months of this transit that, wow, I have been stuck at home or indoors way too much. You know, um, you might be feeling that cabin fever type feeling. Your mother's health might be impacted at this time by this transit as well. So take extra care with your mother. And I've got the note here, avoid frivolous travels or traveling just for fun. Okay, you do want to be careful uh, with this Ketu energy as well. Also avoid getting into property disputes. So, you know, if you have to move or something like that, but this is the kind of thing where if you can keep your home kind of, if you can, you know, keep things stable at home for a year and a half, that is a good thing, okay? If you have to move, of course move, there's no problem, but take extra care if, if you do or if you're dealing with property matters. Um, but it's looking quite good, especially your Rahu in the 10th is quite exciting for career growth. I know this transit, I've had Ketu in the 10th, which is suppression in that area, that's not good. I remember that. But you've got Rahu in the 10th, you've got growth, you've got expansion in your career. So I'm really excited for you, Cancer. Enjoy that transit. All right, now we are gonna welcome Leo. Leo, welcome, thank you so much for joining. So now you've got Rahu in the 9th house, Ketu in the 3rd house. Okay, this is very good actually. I like both of these, these, these are nice. So this is a good time for you to grow intellectually. This is a good time for you to indulge in lots of books, lots of teachings. You can find new gurus. You can really expand your mind and become so much more knowledgeable. Uh, you know, you can learn so much at this time. Great time to get a mentor or a teacher or a guru, but of course it's a good time to be one. Maybe you have so much to share and I've been doing the readings for you guys and some of you are so brilliant and you are so ready to share and teach and give what you have. So definitely look at doing that. Now this could be a good time to expand your work, your authority or your leadership in the world as well. Now travel is definitely possible for you, okay? Definitely green lights for travel. But what I would say here is, and I've been saying this in the signs where I talk about travel, I've been saying that, you know, Saturn and Pluto are in Capricorn. They are doing things like transforming the airline industry, hotels, insurance, all that. So please be careful if you do travel, but travel is definitely indicated. Now, Ketu in the third, this is nice energy here. Okay, you will have the confidence to put yourself forward for opportunities for leadership, for bigger roles, for more authority at work. So, so this is quite nice. This is working really nicely for you guys here. Um, you can be seen, you can be recognized for what you do. Financial gains are very much also possible over this next year and a half. So Leo, I'm very excited for you. It feels like all the hard work that you've been doing, because I know that your sign has been very career focused for quite a while now. And I think all the hard work you've been doing, I think a lot of that is gonna pay off uh, definitely in this next year and a half transit. So I'm excited for you, Leo. All right, we are now gonna welcome Virgo. Virgo, welcome, thank you so much for joining. Now you've got Rahu in the eighth house, Ketu in the second house. So Rahu in the eighth house, this is an excellent time for all of you light workers out there to really expand your skills and maybe even to learn some new occult practice. Okay, you can go deep into your own subconscious and you can figure things out and unravel things. Maybe there have been certain patterns or dynamics that you just haven't been able to work out. Well, I feel like you're gonna be able to potentially resolve some long-standing issues once and for all in this transit. Okay, so that's if you go deep, you look within, you meditate, maybe you work with some good practitioners who are able to help you out. Now this is a great time to alchemize any old, hidden or trapped traumas, okay? Uh, a great time for you to help others do this as well. So if you are a light worker working you know, with clients and all that kind of thing, perhaps you will be quite 
um, quite on your game over this year and a half transit. This could also be a time where you work things out regarding shared assets. So if there have been some pending matters or some shifts or changes in your life to do with family members, shared assets, that kind of thing, you might be able to work all of that out during this transit. Now Ketu in the second, you may not feel like being with family as much if that's true or if that's not true. Uh, sometimes, yeah, sometimes when people have a really giant family and if you've, you know, been with them too much, then you might feel this. Um, it's interesting what, you know, family might be more in focus, but you may not feel as much like being with them. That would be quite natural if you had that feeling. Your expenses might go up at this time. Health-wise, your energy might fluctuate. Okay, so you might actually feel quite tired. Yeah, Rahu in the eighth house. This could be. This this could be an interesting one when it comes to your energy. If you watched my introduction, you'll notice I talked about Rahu in Aries could be very energizing, could give you a lot of energy. I think for you, Virgo, it might even have the reverse effect. I'm not 100% sure. You'll have to see how that goes, but you could be experiencing kind of ascension symptoms, you know, feeling tired and drained for no reason. You might feel uh, things, headaches, eyes, things like that. It could be your Ketu energy, your Ketu transit. But play that by ear. I'm not saying that for sure. This is one of those things that you'll have to observe and see how that goes for you. But Virgo, it is looking quite good. I'm liking this Rahu in the eighth house. I think that's a very exciting part of the transit for you you know, where you can really uh, expand your occult skills and possibly even tap new skills and resources within you. You might even be a little bit more psychic uh, at this time. So Virgo, thank you so much for joining. We are now going to welcome Libra. Libra, I'm just checking the time. I don't want the memory card to cut out. All right, so Libra, we've got Rahu in the seventh house, Ketu in the first house. Okay, let's take a look at this. So Rahu in the seventh house, this is an excellent transit for things like foreign business and for social media. Okay, so if you're engaged in any of those two things, fantastic. Rahu is here to expand all of that for you. So if you have a social media following and you want to increase it, uh, this next year and a half can really help you grow your social media bases or your business, your presence in the world. This could also be a really great time for singles. Isn't this nice? You might meet someone. Oh, I love this. So perhaps you are making uh, a deeper commitment with someone you love. So if you're in a relationship, this could be a time of deepening the commitment with that person. But equally, if you're single, you might meet someone. So that's good. Now, Ketu, in the first house, you might feel a bit drained or physically tired from time to time. That's quite a possibility. So Rahu will want to go for it and really build an empire, you know, but at times you, like the physical body, you might just be feeling depleted. Like, no, I can't do this today. Uh, and that's perfectly natural. All right. I think one of the things that we're going to have with Rahu in a Mars sign and Uranus is there, there's going to be fluctuations in the energy. So physically you, you really might um, feel it at times. The other thing that you might notice is that your psychic powers, your intuition may enhance if you, you know, uh, work with building your psychic abilities and your intuition. If you work with those, if you're a light worker, you use those, then you might find that this is a very good transit to help you become a little bit more uh, insightful, intuitive, all that kind of thing. So Libra, I hope this is going to be a good year and a half for you. I'm wishing you all the best. I'm excited for your Rahu in the seventh house. That does look really exciting, like some exciting energy there. Thank you so much for stopping by. And we are now going to welcome Scorpio. Scorpio, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. So now you have got Rahu in the sixth house. You've got Ketu in the twelfth house. This is brilliant. Rahu in the sixth house. I love this energy. This is great. So this is an excellent time to expand your career, excellent time to expand your business. 
uh, your ability to serve lots and lots of people will be high at this time. So if you're in some kind of work, line of work where you serve lots of people, you know, maybe you're a consultant, you're an advisor, you're a lawyer, you know, this is round the sixth, my goodness, this is going to be amazing energy for those kind of people. But um, this is basically a time where you can help and service lots of clients, lots of customers, or you can help others achieve lots of wins. I've got the note here, your work output can be very high. So that's really exciting. This is great for legal disputes. So if you have been dealing with some kind of legal matter and you've been hoping for some kind of movement, well, I'm hoping that you know uh, in this next year and a half, there is some movement there for you, that there's a possibility of that. And this is great energy, right on the sixth, you know, this is a winning kind of energy here. So um, one thing I will say though is yeah, you, you might want to approach matters with a little bit of restraint. Uh, you might, you know, if, if you're overly confident, you might want to just tone it down um, if you are in some kind of legal matter. But you, you do have some winning energy here, I, I want to say that. Now it's a great time to define boundaries, to bring definition to your life. Okay, so if there have been some areas in your life where perhaps you have needed boundaries but you haven't spoken up, you know, this could be a time to set a boundary as well. This is also a time where your 3D material world, the world around you, the physical stuff world around you, can really be cleaned up, organized, and just, just you know, made, made really clear and yeah, just, just defined. I don't know, there's something good about this energy here. All right, you've got Ketu in the 12th. Oh, this is beautiful. This is a good transit. So this is great for spiritual development. This is great for any personal development work that you want to do. So if you want to transform something about your internal self, your subconscious, you know, some of the subconscious patterns uh, that you have within you, if there's anything like that that you want to transform through personal development work, it's a great time for that. It's not the best time with your spouse if you're married, okay? Uh, your energy for relationships might be a little bit diminished at this time. Expenses could go up through this transit and travel for a little getaway somewhere, that is possible. But what I would say is that if you're considering traveling, take care, okay? Because we do have Saturn and Pluto in Capricorn. Those two are doing things like transforming the airline industry, insurance and hotels and all that. So be very careful if you travel. Okay, now we are going to welcome Sagittarius. Sagittarius, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. I'm just looking at the time. I think we're okay. Uh, we've got Rahu in the fifth and Ketu in the 11th house. So what does this mean for you? Well, Rahu in the fifth, this is an excellent transit for your creativity. So if you're creating, if you're building, designing anything, this is a really great transit. This is also really lovely energy for romance as well. So if you're single, if you want to meet someone, even if you just want to make new friends, this is beautiful energy to do that. Now, speculative games. This could be a time where you are quite interested in speculative games, in, <clears throat> sure, in things like Bitcoin, in things like this, share market, all that type of thing. Um, I've got the note here, be very careful with that over the next year and a half. Just, this is a great time to be conservative, just all round. You know, I'm, I'm being ultra conservative with everything until like 2025, you know, I'm just like, I'm going slow, I'm taking my time and investigating everything. So be careful. Uh, there could potentially be lots of changes in money markets. And one of the reasons for that is, of course, the upheaval that's happening of Pluto in Capricorn. And we've got Saturn in Capricorn as well. So take care. But you might be interested in those matters. Now, Ketu in the 11th house, this is an excellent transit. Ketu here can bring really good healthy gains and rewards to solid efforts that you have put in the past. If you've been working at something, if you've been chipping away at something, if you have been trying to build something, especially if it's creative, well, Ketu is going to want to reward you for that hard work. You've got a year and a half of this, so you've got time, okay? So this is great. It's a good time to start your own business, and it's a really good time to start new streams of income as well. So Sagittarius, I'm loving this energy for you. I think you've got a lot of good 
uh, energies to look forward to here in this next year and a half and I wish you well all right Capricorn welcome Capricorn thank you so much for joining now you've got Rahu in the fourth house you've got Ketu in the tenth house all right what does this mean for you so Rahu in the fourth house potentially you might move isn't that interesting relocation is possible at this time I've got the note here but please be very careful with this transit while it is quite possible that you may move or change location or something along those lines you will want to be really careful this is a tricky transit Rahu in the fourth it's not the easiest um, things can come out of nowhere all that so I've got the note here be careful if you're moving be careful if you're dealing with property matters or any of that be careful if you're traveling as well okay that's important you'll also want to take care of your mother's health uh, avoid arguments is another thing I've got here and funnily enough what what would suit you and help you at this time is actually being at home is actually resting is actually not being too ambitious a, a really good thing for you would be to and I would say yeah sort of enjoy the comforts of home and if you can um, stay where you are for the next year and a half and just really enjoy where you are that's a good thing to do okay that's not a bad thing to do at all Ketu in the 10th I know this one Capricorn this is not my favorite transit I've got the note here you might feel like your career is just not growing at this time I have had this and I observed it for the whole thing and this is the kind of K through the tenth is basically whatever job you're in it will sustain so that's actually very good energy because if you're worried about job losses and things like that we've actually got K through in the tenth protecting you but the only thing that's not great about it is if you want to move ahead if you want to go up if you want to expand you might feel yourself suppressed you might feel that you're just not growing or you're not going anywhere or it's a bit groundhog day you know that kind of energy could be here yeah I have to note here if if you're a salaried professional this offers great stability you shouldn't lose your job exactly but like you know it is it is a year and a half of um, Things, things kind of being a bit samey at work but keep watching the reports keep watching the monthly reports and you'll see other planets are offering beautiful energies at any given time so even though Ketu in the 10th is not great you know you'll find um, a good you know Mars transit or a great Mercury Venus transit or something else or the Sun or you know over this next year and a half you're gonna have beautiful energies that you will be able to take advantage of and do things with but you might feel just an overall sense of a slight suppression on your career that's all okay but do take a look at your Rahu Ketu axis as per you know moon ascendant sun have a look and see what else is in this report you might find some some really nice energies even right here all right well thank you so much for tuning in Capricorn we are now going to welcome Aquarius Aquarius welcome thank you so Aquarius welcome thank you so much for joining sorry about that the camera just got cut now you have got Rahu in the third house Ketu in the ninth house oh this is fantastic I'm happy for you you've got Rahu in the third house yes this is great so you are going to have the confidence to reach for your dreams okay this is great energy for a year and a half you're going to be able to expand your social media following it's a great time to be seen great time to be recognized for what you do you're going to have the energy to work hard you know you'll be able to do extra so if you felt suppressed and like things have been quite challenged um, maybe over the past even couple of years Aquarius I know things have been difficult for you but this is this good energy here you could even get a promotion at this time and your relationship with your siblings and or your friends should improve at this time as well okay so really really great energy there with Rahu in the third you are one of the lucky three who's getting a really great Rahu transit okay so excellent Aquarius this lasts for a year and a half wonderful now travel is a possibility for you so if you want to travel there's good energy for that but what I will say is an, on an overall note with travel and I've been saying this to the other signs 
If you are going to travel, just take extra care because we do have Saturn and Pluto in Capricorn and those two are doing things like, you know, overhauling the airline industry and insurance and, you know, hotels and all kinds of things. So a lot of big structures are being transformed in our world. So take extra care uh, if you are going to be traveling. Now, Ketu in the ninth, this is not the best transit for finances. So do be careful with your money. Okay, so even though you've got that beautiful Rahu energy, which is going to, you know, bring in uh, the confidence for you to reach for your dreams. And, and that Rahu energy has the potential to bring in a lot more money. But be careful that you don't lose it through Ketu, okay? Because Ketu could be, um, you know, your expenses might go up with this Ketu placement. I also have the note here, avoid arguments with family members uh, and, you know, avoid arguments with parents if you're a young person. And if you're older and you have children, then avoid arguments with them. But otherwise, Aquarius, I'm loving this transit. Don't worry too much about the Ketu energy. It, it's That's not so much of a thing. Focus on that Rahu in the third. Focus on your confidence, your courage, to fearlessly go for what it is that you really want. Focus on that and you should have a really good year and a half. So Aquarius, I'm really excited for you. Thank you so much for stopping by. And we are now gonna welcome Pisces. Pisces, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. So now we have got for you Rahu in the second house and Ketu in the eighth house. So Rahu in the second, you'll want to be careful with speech. And I'm pretty sure I vaguely remember having this one. And the, yeah, some of the wisdom and guidance that they give for this Rahu in the second is, you know, speak in moderation. <laughs> so it might be difficult if you run a social media channel, but, um, but you know, that this might be good if you run a social media channel. Because maybe you could put out more videos, I'm not sure. But they do say, you know, you'll, you'll just want to be careful with your words. You'll just want to think a little bit before you speak, that kind of thing. Um, now, health-wise, you might be feeling very energetic, but you also might feel that this drops quickly. So you've got one of these placements where health and energy-wise, you see this Rahu in Aries, in Mars, can bring a lot of energy. So if you watched my intro, you noticed I talked about the fact that you could have a lot of energy come in and you want to spend it. But then equally, we've got Uranus here and the impact on the physical body. So because we've got Rahu in the second here, you might find that this impacts your physical body and that, yes, sometimes you have energy, but then, oh my gosh, sometimes you're just really flat and you just, where did it go? You know, um, I go through that. <laughs> I go through that generally all the time anyway. But um, and some of that could be ascension symptoms as well. You know, we are rising as a, as a collective. We are going up and we've got, you know, they, they talk about light codes coming in through the sun and all kinds of incredible things. So we are transforming, we are upgrading, we are evolving naturally. So just, just bear in mind your energy. I have the note here, be mindful of your diet. Okay, Rahu in the second can be a little bit impulsive, can be a bit, oh, I want to eat everything. Like, yeah, it can be interesting. So be careful with your diet, be healthy, you know, do the wild thing that you want to do now and then, but remember to maintain generally a, a very healthy diet and you'll be fine. Now, expenses could go up at this time as well. Uh, it's good to put in effort to create independent wealth for yourself. You're going to have the energy to, to, to do that, to create independent wealth for yourself, okay? Uh, you can have that as a focus. In fact, that would be a good way to make use of this Rahu in Aries energy, to focus that on creating independent wealth for yourself, to up your savings. Great time to, to do things like, yeah, focus on savings, focus on building your savings, focus on building your independent wealth. Now, Ketu in the eighth. So yes, do be careful with your health. There we go, we've got this message again. Um, K2 in the eighth is great for the occult, all things to do with the occult. So you can expand your occult skills. You might be able to tap new hidden gifts within you. 
this is a really great time to expand your intuition or your psychic powers. If you are a light worker, for example, and you work with clients, you might find that you're really on your game. You might find that, wow, I just, you know, hit after hit after hit. You're just like, you just, you're just reading people kind of thing. You might feel that uh, at this time. So, and yeah, I mean, who knows? You might even be able to tap new hidden gifts within you. That is quite a possibility. Something that you were developing in past lives. You know, perhaps that is something that you're able to, to access now. And, and of course, these things depend on what you've got in your birth chart. Um, you know, but as a general overview, uh, hopefully this guide helps. But thank you so much for tuning in, Pisces. And thank you so much to anyone who has watched the whole thing all the way through. Perhaps you were doing your ironing and it's just I'm rambling in the background. You weren't able to switch the video. <laughs> I don't know. But um, yeah, thank you so much for tuning in, everyone. And I'm wishing everybody a really great year and a half ahead. You know, let's see if we can awaken that light warrior within. Let's see if we can be more confident, go for our dreams, tap our inner authority and our inner fire, our inner leadership fire. You know, this is Rahu in in Aries. This is this is really exciting. I'm really excited about this transit. So thank you so much for tuning in and I look forward to seeing you next time. Mm -hmm.